my name is Stephanie and I decided to um, make a floss tube channel um, I'm gonna probably say I'm um a lot I do that I'm gonna have to try to stop that but I about a month and a half ago I needed to make a project for someone and it was a um, aerial silhouette and I did that and I completed it, finished it, made it into a pillow. It turned out really well. I was pretty happy with it. Um, and since then, I have just had a really big urge to stitch every day. Um, haven't made it every day to stitch, but um, I have definitely been doing a lot, a lot of stitching. Um, <clears throat> I was introduced to cross stitch by my mother. Um, she was a big stitcher in my childhood and growing up there was always a project going on she stitched a lot for gifts um, one of the ones that I remember most distinctly was one that was in that ended up being turned into a tapestry for a Renaissance building so I have had you know I've had exposure to small projects I've had exposure to big projects I've seen a lot. She was very, um, she, she is very talented. She, and um, so because she stitched, I started stitching about the time that I was eight or nine. It was pretty traumatic because I had put the needle in the arm chair rest and I got upset about something and slammed my fist down on my needle like that I remember very distinctly and when I lifted it up I had like a needle sticking out of my palm or the side of my fist um so I've been I that's when I started stitching I did by no means stuck with it um for any length of time that was it was either 8 or 10 so we're talking 21 to 23 years ago so there's you know definitely have not been consistently stitching I've had a few projects here and there um, but like I said I really have been stitching quite a bit over the past month I've joined a couple of Facebook groups and they have inspired me daily with pictures of their whips and just all sorts of different cross stitch um, I've also been watching floss tube a lot um, <clears throat> I actually spend my mornings watching floss tube and then in the evenings I'll watch something else like TV shows or something while I stitch but I start my morning off with floss tube so I decided to go ahead and create my own channel share my own work um, so here's to hope and it all goes well um, my introduction to floss tube is actually kind of a fun story um, and it's actually Jess from Jesse Marie Does Stuff. She is a she was a book blogger, is a book blogger, and I, that's where I started. Um, my internet presence. I don't know. Um, I run a blog called Once Upon a Chapter, and on that blog, it's a book review blog. I would occasionally share whip updates because I didn't have anywhere else to do it. I didn't even know there was an entire community of stitchers out there. And holy goodness, there's a lot of you. <laughs> Which is great for inspiration, let me tell you. So, I shared a few of my whip updates on my blog and she read my blog. And after she saw that, she decided to give it a go herself. Um, she bought a small kit she stitched that up fairly quickly and oh my goodness guys oh my goodness that girl in the two or three years I don't know how long it's been because it's been a while that she's been stitching I cannot believe how deep this hobby has rooted for her I can't believe how gr how good she is at it she is amazing at it I love her floss tube videos she's a and she was my introduction to floss tube so it kind of came full circle so um if you haven't checked out her channel you might want to she's she's definitely been an inspiration for me and i just i love i love her progress i love her projects i love watching 
I love watching her videos. Um, so that's that was kind of my introduction to floss tube. Um, some fun facts or trivia maybe, maybe not so much fun facts. They're kind of fun for me. Um, my favorite color of floss, I don't really ever have a favorite color because there are so many gorgeous flosses out there and when you are somebody who only knew about DMC up until about three years ago, there is a whole world of beautiful flosses out there. Um, one of the most, one of my most recent favorites um, was one that I worked with. Gosh, there's that um again. I'm going to have to stop that. And it was the bell silhouette. Let's kind of see through there. There we go. And this was, I did this in um, most silk in butterfly. And I just love how that turned out. It was, it was a lot of fun to work with. It's the first time that I worked with silks. And it was, I just love the buttery color and how it turned out. I really do. Um, so that was probably one of my favorites just because it was so shiny and pretty. Um, I tend to have squirrel reflexes when it comes to floss and um, it's prettiness. My heart is not loyal to one, that's for sure. I, and what I mean by squirrel syndrome is I see a new one, a squirrel. Or, I, and I do that a lot. So I apologize if I'm not very consistent. Um, definitely apologize in advance for that. Because I'm a little bit all over the place. I have notes though. So hopefully I can stay focused. Um, my least favorite color is definitely ironic. <laughs> because one of my whips that I'm going to show you in a little bit, you'll understand why. But... Um, it is 996 Medium Electric Blue by DMC, and this is why. This project, I thought, I made a rookie mistake, guys. I thought because I was going to, because of all of this blue, and it's all stitched, all of it, I thought because I had so much of one color, that this project was just going to whip right through. I was going to take no time at all. This was going to be done like in a month and a half. Oh, God. no, 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 no. It took me like four years because I would get so fed up with it row upon row upon row upon row of medium electric blue. Just going to show you that again. Just let that sink in. It wasn't fun. So I would stitch a little bit and then I'd put it away and then I'd stitch a little bit more and then I'd put it away. It took me four years, guys, of off and on stitching. So 996, while I think the color is very pretty, we have a bad history. And it's mostly my fault. It's nothing it did. I made a rookie mistake. And I assumed because a bunch of one color would mean very few floss changes, um, not having to really think about what I was doing, that that would go quickly. And I think that I've discovered, especially after last week's whip, um, that I don't like that. I like to think, um, I like to count, I like to change things up. So that was a very difficult project for me. And as you can see, it's not even really finished. It's the stitching is done, but it's not fully finished. I haven't done anything with it yet. It sits in a bag. But I'm going to have to think of something because I don't want to put it in to turn it into a pillow, but I'm thinking about maybe doing a shadow box with some Nintendo vinyls on the front, but I don't want it to be blocked either. So it's kind of been like a... I don't really know what to do with it now that I'm finished with it. So yeah. 996 is probably my least favorite color to work with. Not my least favorite color, just not a favorite to work with. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much my introduction. Uh, now, I think it's time to share my whip rotation. This is something new for me. Um, 
back when I was stitching Bitter Luigi, I was a pretty monogamous stitcher. I would only stitch one project, maybe two at a time, and that's only if I had something that needed to be done, like a cross stitch ornament or something like that. Um, I never would have had um, four big, four bigger projects going on at once and just as a heads up, as a beginner, I kind of consider anything more than a, than a, than a card a bigger project. Um, maybe full-sized is a better way to go because they're, they're not necessarily big. But um, So I started a rotation. I was going to stick with four because four seemed like a lot for somebody who only ever stitched one at a time. And it made it nice and easy for a month and then I could, you know, catch everything at least once in a month. But then my husband told me that if I did this one project for him, he would he would frame it and he would put it in at his desk at work. I can't say no to that. You can't. So um, he's gonna it, that project is gonna be thrown into rotation, but not until after I get back from vacation because the piece that I'm working on during vacation is for somebody. I'll get into that when I tell you about it. There's no sense going into it now. But, um, you, today, typically I switch over on Mondays, uh, Sunday nights, so that Monday when I go to grab my project, whether I take it to work or I'm going to stitch at home, um, I, switch, I switch from frame to frame on Sunday nights. Uh, this week was different because of Memorial Day. We were traveling, and I had my current week's whip with me for Saturday and Sunday, and I did not bring along an extra for Monday. I didn't bring the next one for Monday because it was just too much of a pain. Um, and you'll see why. It was enough of a pain to take <laughs> to take the whip that I was working on. So um, this week I am working on the Woodland Creatures Sampler from the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And I am currently that does There we go. It's better. So I am through June, and I started on July, and then that's when I set it back down. And I've I started this one on November nineteenth of twenty thirteen. It is my oldest whip. And then on top of that. I have the Storytime Sampler and the Once Upon a Time Sampler that I did not even start. So I have lots of Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery stuff to work through. So um, this month I want to get through, I'm hoping to get through July and at least get August bordered and started if not finished. He's kind of cute. He's a skunk. I don't know if you saw that. So I have the fox here to finish and then I will hope to get through this guy. That will be this week's project. Stay. Then next week, I will be on vacation for three days and then the weekend. So I'll have a nice long time to stitch. And that'll be great because this project is actually kind of like a commissioned piece. Um, the girl saw it. She thought it was this girl. Labyrinth is her life. And this is the pattern that I'm going to be working on um, and I can show you I am I don't know about a third of the way through it maybe in my project files and oh I don't think I told you but Woodland Creatures is on a 28 count even weave and I'm stitching that two over two now this one, there we go, there we go. that's where I'm at right now. So I'm down into the fireys and because I'm going to have a decent chunk of time to spend on this, I want to, gosh that is really see through back there, um, I want to get through the fireys definitely into the second group of text, and I would really be pleased if I could get Ludo done. Ludo's a big guy. So I'm up in here, and I want to make it down to here. 
the, the words really don't take that long. Um, I am, um, if I have to cross more than just uh, a few blocks, I do cut it off because it's black and it shows through pretty, pretty clearly on this, on this fabric. So, and this is, where's my project card? This is on Grace, ooh, wait, there we go. Um, it, Grace, it's a 28 count Lugana from Hand Dyed Fabrics by Stephanie. And it's kind of changing on me here. I don't know if that's gonna be, but no, that's making it more brown. It's, it's a cross between, that's pretty cool. Nope, just changed again. Now I get why you guys have issues with lighting. Anyway, it's kind of like a cross between a brown and a yellow, but it has, let's see, that's not really, kind of like these pinks and purples in here. That's actually pretty close to color as long as it doesn't change again. Nope, nope, there it went. <laughs> but it's it's kind of like a yellowish brown, brownish yellow, um, with pinks and purples modded, modeled through. And it's been a lot of fun to stitch, um, if I haven't done it even very consistently. It has been a lot of fun. So, there we go. I'll just stick the pictures in there and then you guys will have them for next time. Okay, so that is next week's project. And I started that one back in October, at the very end of October, I started that one. Now the next one is the one that my husband wanted me to stitch. Now, mind you, this is actually what the kit looks like. My project file, I guess, not kit. Um, because he wanted to stitch it, so I don't share my floss. So he ordered all new floss. He's got needles in there. Um, John James gold plated size 26 needles. Those are my favorite needles. I love just how smooth they are. So all of this now becomes mine by forfeit. And I had originally given him two different fabric fabrics. Oh, that's eight to two. I don't like that. Um, both of these are Ada 14 count. This one is too dark. And this one is super stiff, like that. Yeah, and it's super old too. I couldn't even tell you. All I know that is that it was purchased at a Ben Franklin, and there are no Ben Franklins around us, and there haven't been in at least 15 years. So it's pretty stiff. And I found that once I spent enough time doing two over two, on Lugana even weave and I think I've even done some dribbling in fact I'm pretty sure Belle was on that um, it's very hard for me to go back to Ada it's just it's super stiff and it feels hard to work with and I just prefer the feel and look of Lugana really it's my favorite so far but the project is Clouds Factory Back to the Future so I've placed an order with the one, two, three stitch, which is why I don't have the fabric to show you, but it's a 28 count ice blue Lugana from one, two, three stitch. So it'll be on its way and it will definitely be here in time for me to start this in my rotation. So that is going to be week two and I'm hoping that Clouds Factory patterns aren't deceptive in their size, so it will not take, hopefully, won't take long to stitch up. And I love that I only paid like $3 for the fabric. It was great. Okay, the next one is one that I'm stitching for myself. Like I said, my mom didn't do very much stitching for herself. I don't remember that being a thing. She did a lot of gifts. But this one is for me, and it is the Hero of Times Square from 14 Count on Etsy. And I love this pattern. It's a little bit blurrier, I think, than it stitches out to be, 
But in this pattern we have Link and Zelda, Princess Zelda, Link. People get that confused all the time. They think Zelda is the guy. Mm -mm, nope, Zelda's a princess. Um, Lon Lon Milk, which is a ranch in Hyrule. And Navi up here in the corner. Navi was super, super annoying in Ocarina of Time. If you've ever played that game, hey, look! You heard that a lot. A lot. This is a Hyrulean shield. Um, I think that's what it's called. I think it's just the Hyrulean shield. But Link carries this. And then you have Epona and a few different um, weapons up here. You have a boomerang and a bomb and a bow. And the hearts are what he uses. Um, that's how you measure his life force in the game. And then there's some rupees and some arrows and then the Hyrulean Triforce and then the um, gemstones, I think. I'm not really sure, um, but these are representative of the goddesses of Hyrule. So, <coughs> that is my third week, excuse me. Maybe I need a drink. And I only got to work on him for three days because I was finishing up a Mill Hill kit. So, I didn't get to spend much time with it. And... This is where I got. Just this little sighing in the middle and then part of the border, which was really only my, my only goal. Um, and the saying is, a thing that does not change with time is a memory of younger days. So, and I'm stitching it on 28 count doubloon from Picture This Plus. And I love this fabric. Funny story. The balloon crystal, I think, is what was used in the Once Upon a Time. It was a suggested fa fabric for the Once Upon a Time sampler. And I am usually, I usually am going to get the suggested fabric. Um, I'm not very adventurous in my fabric selections because, frankly, it's a lot of money. So, not all the time. But sometimes it can be a lot of money and I you know the designer designed it with that in mind and that's what they stitched it on that's what the just you know the display or the picture is when they try to sell it that's why you know typically that's why I liked it so I'm gonna typically I'm normally going to go with the suggested fabric um, and I fell in love with it I bought the doubloon for the once upon a time sampler that I haven't started yet it's still back there but um yeah I fell in love with it and I knew that when I saw it it would be perfect for this project because it looks like antiqued book pages I just it does that's what I think about when I see doubloon um, confession when I was still learning how to do two over two it took a lot of practice. Like it just wasn't something that came naturally to me. Like when I first started on Ada, it, I was constantly mis, miscounting and ending up in the wrong spot and having to go back and pull out and, you know, restitch. And there, there was a moment in a fit of rage I decided I was never going to stitch two over two again. I didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't want to work on anything lower than an 18 count. And why did anybody bother going away from Ada? Like, it was a big thing to me. Like, I was, I ser I think it was really just a pity party. Disguised in anger. Um, because two over two is not hard once you spend some time with it. At least it wasn't for me. Um... But during that pity party, 
I went ahead and purchased a bunch of Ada for projects that I've been wanting to do. And I shouldn't have. Because now I can't work. I, I don't like to work with it. I should, could, shouldn't, shouldn't say I can't. I don't prefer to. And I bought a big old piece of parchment Ada from 123Stitch for Giant Harry Potter from Clouds Factory. That big, long thing. Because it was going to take about a yard of 28 count, I think, if I did my calculations correctly. And I wasn't going to do 2 over 2. I wasn't going to work a big project like that and not like what how it came out. Well, now I want to bloom. I mean, I had my heart set on that from the beginning. I wanted to bloom. I tried to trade off by switching to Ada, thinking it was going to be easier, thinking it was going to be better for me and really in the end I think what I've learned is that I should go with the fabric that I want save for a few months if necessary because seriously a yard of doubloon from picture this plus is expensive it's like a hundred dollars it's crazy but it will be absolutely gorgeous when it is finished so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna save up for a big old fat piece of doubloon from Picture This Plus because that's what I want for my Harry Potter. The heart ones look the heart ones. Sometimes the wallet just has to save it up for a little bit. So yeah, that is my love affair with doubloon from Picture This Plus. I love that fabric. And then the piece, the last whip in my rotation is the piece that I took off last night and it was the piece that told me that I do not mind confetti stitching as much as I thought I was going to. I hated it at first. Hated it. Oh my goodness. And when I point it out to you, you're probably, you, I can't show you the pattern obviously, but when I show you the, the part that I started at, it doesn't look like there would be much confetti in there, but holy good lord. I think I started with 15 different colors and a first square that was maybe a quarter of a square like a 10 by 10 square it was either a quarter or a half and there were like 15 different colors in there and when I went to go start this I had no intention of parking I do not want to park I didn't want to park I didn't it was new it was scary I didn't want to do it and I didn't grid because I wasn't gonna park until I actually started stitching and I was like yeah this is a lot of different colors to start and stop and start and stop and start and stop and start and stop. And once I worked on it a little bit, like I was pretty discouraged within the first 30 or 40 stitches, which is not a lot, especially considering this project. But it, it takes a little bit to get the hang of it. So this is where I got, and I haven't showed you the picture yet, but wanted you to see the detail here man look at that so where I started is down in here and there's like a out, outline of white and then there's like the brush stroke brush stroke enunciate Stephanie and then some of her hair and then an elbow and when you were stitching it you can't really, I swear, you can't really tell what you're doing until you take a break from it. Because last night I could not see an arm. All I could see were the colors. But I'm pretty proud of where I got. And I stitched a lot last night. And I loved it. This over here, by the way, is a needle miner. Minder. From uh, Gina's Unique Boutique, who just happened to open, I think, today. Um... But I thought it was appropriate, and I think you'll probably agree with me once I actually show you what it is I'm trying to stitch. Maybe. Okay. There she is, guys. She is gorgeous. I love love this series. It is um, <laughs> the small version of Designer Ariel. And let's just show you. And this, I can't remember if I did this with six inch border or just the three inch border. 
but she's gonna be gonna be a big girl guys ain't no problem here with big girls we like big girls but you remember from my video or earlier in the video I should say 30, 30 minutes now I didn't think I was gonna talk this long my least favorite color to stitch is number 996 DMC and I think I still have like 10 skeins from the Bitter Luigi project so yay at least I have enough floss of that color because I kid you not in designer Ariel, there are over 4,000 stitches in 996. Clearly, I'm drawn to I'm, I'm drawn to the color, but I love I love these designs, these these patterns. Um, the where the area that I'm stitching now is over here, and I've got her hair and her elbow done. Maybe it looks awfully small on my pattern but or on my frame but that is what I'm working on um I don't remember if I said but it's the uh, Frogwood Manor on Etsy and she is going to be gorgeous I don't know how much fun I'm gonna have stitching her because again over 4,000 stitches in 996 guys I don't know how I'm gonna do it but I had fun up yesterday and granted there wasn't a whole lot of 996 in there but I have a feeling she's gonna be fun I'm gonna say she's gonna be fun. I forgot to show you guys while I was showing you designer Ariel so I'm gonna snip that and then I'm gonna show you this because holy floss Batman holy floss this is a photo box from Joann's I'm not gonna dump it but look that is full and there's like eight colors in the project file but it is full of dnc it's a ton of floss guys there's like 120 colors or something like that i could be exaggerating i'm not sure but there's a lot and i had to show that because that's crazy so that's i think that's it for me for now i've introduced myself I've shown you my whip rotation and kind of some goals for June. Those are going to be my June goals. It's to get as far as I can basically in each project. The only one that has any really solid goals are Labyrinth. The Labyrinth sampler, I want to get that one. I want to get a lot of work done on that one. I don't want to make her wait any longer. So, um, yeah, that's, that's it for me today. Say hi, leave a comment if you've got any advice. Um, for cross stitching, if you have any any suggestions to where do you sh could get your needle minders, I just found uh, Nifty Needle Nannies and placed an order with her pretty much immediately. Um, I love the enabling t side of the community. Um, if you want to just say hi, say hi, yeah. So that's it for me for now. I don't know that I'll, I don't know what my schedule will be for posting videos. I don't I don't get enough um, I don't have enough progress to do weekly videos, so I'm not sure if it'll just be once a month, maybe twice a month. I don't know. We'll see. Um, it'll be fun no matter what. So yeah, happy stitching, guys.